Every one can see Guruji. We, the human beings, the earth, are by chance or by choice of God or any superpower. Why we are on this planet? <laughs> by accident or by design or by superpower. I think even the planet is wondering why the hell these human beings came here <laughs> See, uh, the solar system, the way it is, and so as the other universal systems, the galaxies, they're all happening because they arrive at a certain perfection of geometry. Geometry in the sense, right now this planet is going around the sun, it's found its perfect orbit, so it's going and going and going. Not powered by engine or something, see the airplane is going, powered by engines, it's being pushed. This is not being pushed, this has just found a certain perfe perfection of geometry and it's going on. The day it loses its perfection of geometry, if it loses the line of orbit, it's gone. So in this process, life happens on this planet, also involving this geometry on various levels. We say in the yogic culture, we say a human being is physiologically and in terms of brain has reached its peak physiologically. That is, after a million years you will not have a horn coming out of your head or something else, like the tail disappeared, something else will disappear, this cannot happen. We are saying this from a certain context. Today the modern neuroscientists are saying similar things. They are saying the size of the neuron in the human brain can neither increase nor in can the wiring inside can increase because the physical laws don't permit it. The laws of physics do not permit it. I will not go into the detail of that. To put it very simply, how we see it is, your birth here, right now all life on this planet is solar powered, isn't it? Yes? It is the sun's energy which is doing all this. Human… B uh, and also this, uh, the revolutions and the rotations of the moon also has influence upon us. The very ocean is rising and falling with the movement of the moon. Only because our mother's bodies were in tune with the cycle of the moon, we are born and we are here, yes? If this twenty-eight day cycle of the moon does not repeat itself in a woman's body, you and me wouldn't be born. So because it has reached that, we say physically, the physical laws have take… come to a certain place where life upon this planet cannot evolve further. You can make use of what you have in a much better way. Using the same technology, we had a dumb phone, then we had a smartphone, now we have an iPhone. Like this we can go on improving it, how we use it. But the fundamental physical laws will not permit any further evolution of this creature. So did it happen by accident? No. The theory of evolution, you know Charles Darwin, who made a monkey out of you? Not me, him. If you look at the theory of evolution, which was propounded just hundred and fifty years ago, we have said this thousands of years ago, in the sense. You know the ten avatars, at least the nine you know, those who have come. What is the first one? Ah, matsya avatar. Matsya avatara means fish or water life. All life on this planet started under water. What is the next avatara? Kurma avatara, amphibious like a turtle, half in the water, half on the land. The next one is varaha avatara, a pig or a wild boar. Among the mammals, one animal which is strongly, strongly rooted in its body is a wild boar. See, we, we live next to the forest, we see this. The tribal boys can kill a deer with a stick. If you hit it with a stick, it'll fall dead. The local dogs will hunt the deer, but a wild boar you try to kill him and see, it's not easy to kill him. You go smash him with a car, his spine is broken, still he will go, he will not stop. Because he's so physically rooted, his life is so physical, 
So the next form of life was Varahavatara. This simply means the creator is finding expression in first as fish, then as a turtle, then as a wild boar, next one is Narasimha, half… half man, half animal, next one is Vamana, a dwarfed man, next one is a full-grown man but volat emotionally volatile man who is Parishurama, next one is a peaceful man which is Rama, next is a loving man which is a Krishna, next is a meditative man which is a Buddha, the next is supposed to be a mystical being yet to come, okay? This is running very much in parallel lines with the Darwin's theory of evolution, yes or no? It's in the same sequence, exactly in the same sequence. Darwin propounded his theory only hundred and fifty years ago. This was said twelve to fifteen thousand years ago. Adiyogi himself spoke about it. So, if you observe life, you can clearly see from what is inanimate, basic life formed. From that, life evolved. We've always seen it that way. Always we saw life evolved. Constantly, we are… Uh, in every temple you go, there is a snake, there are various symbolisms all around the place because even today in your brain, one part of your brain is a reptilian brain, you know? The core part of your brain is still a reptilian brain and it still functions and we have different practices in yoga as to how to transcend this reptilian brain and allow the cerebral cortex to function. And today we have scientific evidence to show you. The University of California has done scientific studies on Shambhavi Mahamudra, the basic practice we teach usually. And they say if you practice Shambhavi Mahamudra for three months, the neuronal regeneration increases by two hundred and forty-one percent, a kind of percentage that's never been recorded in the history of any kind of research, okay? Just a simple practice for twenty-one minutes, two hundred and forty-one percentage increase in your brain function and neuronal regeneration. This means as you grow old, you will become more intelligent. Usually young people think you're getting stupid. Yes, your brain is actually growing. You understand? It's getting better by the day. Now there is scientific evidence. We alway, always knew this, but today a meter has to say it. If a man says it, it's not true. If a man says it, it's doubtful. But a meter has to say it, now the meters are saying it. The meters are saying your brain is actually growing by doing a simple twenty-one mini minute practice. And you don't believe the meter, you just do the practice for three months and see you will see how clear and how smart your mind is suddenly.